Foals are born here, they raise for about six months, they spend six months with their mum and then they, they get weaned. Mum sort of um, heads off and spends time with, her, with the other and once the foals get weaned, the foals come across to this part of the farm and it's a bit like on the high school. So they're, they're, they're now at high school, they've um, six months of age and then spend the next six months just hanging around the paddocks with their, with their friends. And then, you know, get to December of their yearling year and that's when we've looked at them. We look at them and put them into groups of yearlings. We work out who we think need to be broken in early. They're normally the more precocious ones and their pedigree indicates that they're the, the ones that are gonna race as two-year-olds and then that'll happen in, in January. So this is a call we're pretty excited about for next year. He's got a lovely head on him. He's got a great jowl through here. You know, a big strong jowl and uh, you know, strong neck. Great depth, great angle on the shoulder through here. Um, and a lovely big strong forearm, quite a big strong forearm here. Um, and the great thing then, he's got a lovely girt size here, which is normally indicative of, of a sort of holding quite a big heart. And that's sort of important, keeps the blood flow going through and it also normally pretty sort of genuine sort of horses. So they've been with us for 18 months and it's just another education and it's part of the process and just getting them ready to go into the racing stables. The whole idea is that they don't get um, you know, upset by anything, it's all just a natural progression from the paddock to be broken into the racing stables in Sydney. Our whole process is just to give them all the same opportunity and that sometimes you just need them to give them that little bit extra time just to get it. My name's Scott Eels. I'm a breaking in manager at Godolphin. I've been in this role for the past 13 years and I've overseen the breaking of 3,500 horses. This season we're breaking in about 146 yearlings. Mm. So today's day three. Uh, the program for the first week is basically just to get the horses settled into a routine. They'll head to the rolls first thing in the morning, one by one. It's a lot of, a lot of desensitising, a lot of repetition, uh, accepting the bridle, yep. roller and then saddle. There's different ways we go about it, um, but the difference is the minor between breakers. The word breaking is, is pretty old school, it's not actually breaking anymore. You're not breaking a horse's spirit. The word is actually education. All we're doing is educating. It's just like sending your kids to school. You know, you're not there to break their spirit. You're there to educate them and that's exactly what we're doing, all, all in different stages throughout their life. It's all about just remembering they're as different as every human being. And then some take more time, some take less time. So the ones that are more nervous, they'll get that extra day, that extra week, that extra month. It, it makes absolutely no difference to us, um, the speed that we get them in. We're up here at Godolphin Kelvin side in the Hunter Valley. This is where all the education of Sheikh Mohammed's Australian racehorses takes place. What we do here at Kelvin side during their education will not only help them during their racing life, but we also try and make it so it's has a long lasting effect so they have a pleasurable life after racing whether it be in dressage or show jumping or just as a pleasure horse. This is just desensitising him. Um, not everybody does it or people do it in a lot of different ways. I like to do it this way because it's me that controls how much pressure goes on and often the, the idea is if he moves I'll keep the bag on him. 
and um, if he doesn't, when he stops, I'll take it away. So it's just pressure release. So this filly is just got the roller and the side reins on, the mouthing gear. So this is to teach her to um, how to carry her head when she's running, um, how to have a bit in her mouth, go, and how to have someone moving the bit in her mouth. So we just Come start on. off with them quite loose and gradually make them tighter until they're tight enough as if a rider would be holding the reins on their back. Good girl. With the, with the halter, doing a few little things like this helps them just to be that little bit softer. Um, yeah, that, that's why I do that. This is um, this is a few things. The re reason I do this one is it's just also desensitising. Like it's a weird thing that's kind of touching its bum, and and they commonly don't like it for starters. And two, you sort of really push in their intellect. Um, when they first start doing it, they sort of commonly will struggle. Um, and so I'm like now I'm asking for that flexion, and then and then I step away. And I want them to move. So it, it, what it does is it makes them softer for when you get on their back. So they don't just turn and their neck stays stiff as a board. They like give to you and then turn. So in between changing directions, I like to give them a good pat and a bang all over, just to desensitise them a bit for when they've got someone on top of them moving around. Makes it a bit easier when you ride them for the first day. <laughs> Some horses are more relaxed. Uh, the more relaxed horses progress a bit quicker um, because they're more comfortable with what you're doing. Um, if they're a little bit more nervous, um, a little bit more hot temperamented, then you sort of take everything just a step slower. Just put a little bit less pressure on them until they're ready to cope with more pressure. Any good horse person will pick it up, just working with horses daily. And it's all, it's, it's just how their appearance to you, you they're, they're very easy to read, um, mostly through head carriage, like obviously um, a horse with his ear, ears back is unhappy, you, you just want that horse, especially if you're doing something with the barriers or the gear on for the first time, just to drop its head, you know, and have a chew on the bit and that's them saying that I'm, I'm great with everything and I'm happy. The biggest challenges of braking are probably having a lot of patience. Um, every now and then you get a horse that's really just pushing your buttons and things aren't going the way you want it to go. The horse doesn't know what's going on because it's never done any of this before. Basically you just can't lose your patience with them because they don't know what's going on. <laughs> so it doesn't solve any problems. But you just have to sort of work with what you've got and try and get the best out of them so that they're you know, safe and comfortable and can turn into racehorses. We're on the eighth day of having the horses in now. Everything's been well under saddle for the past, majority of them for the past three days. The stage you're at now is they're just going straight to the roll doing a couple of laps of lunging and then straight on them. Good girl. So at the moment, all we're really trying to teach you to do is how to move forward off your leg and how to stop and steer and just be comfortable with a rider on her back. Ooh. They're pretty fast learners, especially at this age. Ooh. I only give them sort of two, maybe three rides in the round yard before I move them out to the, the arena, which is just a bigger area. They've been stuck in the round yard for over a week, which as you can imagine, looking at these black walls gets pretty boring pretty quickly. Half of them have progressed to be out here in the arena and it just gives them a little bit more, a little bit more freedom and you can get them striding out just that little bit better and this just 
gets them to focus on different things and you can sort of work out the horse's personality a little bit more before they hit the track. So straight away she's more forward out here, happier to trot out and she's actually enjoying it too. You can see from her ears they're pricked, she's not scared, her tail's nice and loose and relaxed. So for this stage she's doing everything really well and I'll pop her into trot and we'll just keep repeating the things that we've been doing in the round yard in a bigger open area. Good girl. quite hard work for them in here, the sand's quite deep, so they get tired quite quickly. So you never want to overdo it and push them too far when they're tired. They just don't have the mentality at this age to cope with too much hard work. So because she's doing everything right, I'm going to give her a little canter in here. Good girl. Obviously all her back muscles are weak, she's never carried weight on her back. And they get quite unbalanced very easily. So the trick is to do lots of smaller canters, not tire her out. She'll gradually find her legs and get it balanced properly. Any decent horseman will learn it. It's just the horses hold composure. Um, it's just like raising kids. It's just it's exactly the same. They're just as different um, as we are. And, you know, you can see this horse now. She's just putting her head down. She's having a chew. She's probably a little bit tired, but she's also happy. Considering that she's, you know, she is only a baby, it's the first time in the, in the arena she's away from any other horse. She's just accepted that Bridget's on her and um, she's definitely going in the right direction. So when I'm rewarding her, um, right from the very first day that I start working them, they always get told to stand and then when they stand they get a really big pat. It's just really calming for them and they eventually get to learn that that's a good thing. When they're being patted everything around them stops, it's quiet, nothing's fast or rushing. Good girl. Rightio. So on her way home I'll take her over and walk her through the practice barriers. So this will be her first time going through with the rider on her back. We just like to get them used to walking into a confined space, but it's not as challenging as the official starting gates. Obviously it's a bit wider, um, there's less going on, it's nice and quiet. There's no footsteps on the sides, so we can scrape off the wooden edges. We like to make a bit of noise in here, just kind of simulate what they may experience down at the actual starting gates. The main thing is that they walk straight in and stand here and they're relaxed. It's a pretty important step of their breaking in because um, horses that can't, can't jump out of the gates properly and can't behave in the barriers can actually get banned from racing. She's pretty happy with that so we'll just leave her on a good note. She's done everything right today. She's pretty tired. <laughs> Take her home and tidy her up. Come on girl. Thank you. These babies that we have in now, this is their, towards the end of their third week. So their first jump out today, they'll splash pull this, uh, this afternoon. By the end of their fourth week, they've had three jump outs, three swims. At the end of the fourth week, then they'll progress to Sydney, and then our trainer will just assess how they cope, how they look, and they'll go back to the paddock for usually anywhere between three to six weeks. One, two, three. The last few days they've been on the track and just walking in the gates. This is their first jump out. Race day they've got to stay in sometimes for minutes. So um, the more jump outs they do, they do, the longer we'll leave them in here. If we, if, we, if we just put them in and, and jump out, they'll, they'll expect next time just to go in and jump out and not stand. So uh, the more relaxed we can get them, the better. 
at the barriers, especially the first time, we just wanted to walk down here calmly, walk in, close them up behind when they're happy, let them fill the back gates, then just give them a little bit of a wave in front until they're happy. We just want them to stand there as quiet as possible and, um, and just be relaxed and make, it, make everything a good experience. Good lad. So all we need them to do the first jump out is just behave really and it doesn't matter how they fall out, whether they walk out, trot out or canter off, as long as they're relaxed and the lead pony will just jump out with them and just get them past the gap. We're just going to come out of here nice and easy and just work along and that was pretty good. You like that? That was good. Our jump out pony, Hockenheim, his role is to come down to the gate and he'll stand in the side of the gates. When they open, he'll set the pace. He'll go with the first horse and get him across the gap. And what this does, it just gives, gives the babies a bit of security with a, a relaxed horse around them. He just switches on, he knows his job. Um, he's, if we have one that's very unsettled in the gates, he just, he's so calm and zen-like and he comforts the babies. He, he, he's quite a card, he, he's, he's so relaxed that even on a jump out morning of 40 jump outs, 45 degree heat, he'll come back down in between every jump out. He'll actually close his eyes and fall asleep in the gates. He's the reason half these horses are so good in the barriers. The old school of breaking is long gone, you know, it's, it's been moved on, especially with, with Godolphin. Nothing we do, especially high pressure areas like the barriers and swimming, um, it's nothing that we want to make the horse do, it's about getting the horse to want to do it. It's a lot safer way for the horse and rider and you get such a better, a better result. This pool at Kelvin side is built specifically to educate babies. So you've got the whole the whole splash pool. Everything can be closed up so no horse can ever get away from us. Everything's non-slip. It's all the walls are uh, rubber that we use in the in the crushes. Um, the the pool's 2.4 meters deep and 48 meters from from end to end. Uh, Saltwater chlorinated. It's just built just, just for babies. Come on. That's a boy. Hey, there you go. Now you're in. Just stay there, Sergi, because he'll, he'll go back with the other one. I don't mind him having a bit of a play if it makes him happy. So it's, it's, it's half that initial, not just the water, but the walk down. So he should be good now. So I'll go out back in and then I'll do a little lap. The only reason we have someone behind them with a whip is if they do try and go backwards too much, it's more or less just a barrier. We find that trying to do the splash pull and going in the big pool in one day is too much for them. Second time through, they always get a bit of a look at the big pool without actually being faced with it. Um, that way when they do come down Friday morning, They've seen the big pool already, it hasn't hurt them, so they're, they're quite easy to get in.
any of the babies that are a little bit scared or um, reluctant to come in, we just take as much time as they need. Any that don't want to go straight in the water, we'll, we'll get them in and we'll repeat it several times. So all we want them to do now is walk in calmly. I'll just put a clip on each side. And the guys on the side will just keep him in the middle of the pool and keep his head nice and low. And he'll just swim up one lap. Just sit there, just mostly that they, they don't start climbing, which is a bit of a problem. Then the, the guys on the leads need to bring their head down. Some don't pick it up straight away, but once, once they have two or three swims, it's, it's pretty natural for them. Pretty much the same as everything we do. We try and make it as less stressful as possible. Some horses just take to it naturally and others, others are quite scared, but they get over it get over it very quickly. Watching those horses and thinking how they've come from from the first day they were here to the last day they're here, it's, it's like sending your kids off to school for the first time. It's, it's, it's a really good feeling. And you know, in saying that, full credit has to go to the guys that are doing the braking job, you know. Um, you're only as good as the people that are around you, so you know, they deserve a lot of merit.